Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews. I'm joined by Bronwyn Groot, who's the Fraud Education Manager at the Commission for My Financial Capability. Thanks for joining us, Bronwyn. Thanks. Now, Bronwyn's here to talk to us about scams, or actually, as you're preferring to call them now, frauds. Yes. Um, now, there's a heck of a lot of this going on these days with all sorts of people across society being victims of yep. these frauds. Um, can you just start off, maybe give us a little bit of context around the size of this problem and then why you want us to call it fraud instead of scams? Um, I think the size of the problem is it's definitely growing. Um, we don't have any figures that we can throw out there. There hasn't been any large-scale research done on this to actually see how big the problem is. But I know coming across my desk on a daily basis that people are losing hundreds and thousands and if not millions of dollars every day. And what sort of frauds are you, know, are you seeing at the moment? I mean, you know, I mean there, there appear to be some very sophisticated international ones running. There's obviously the classic old you know, cold calling uh, type things, the email ones. Um, what's, what's most common at the moment, perhaps, or new? I think a lot of the ones that we're seeing are the overseas investment scams, whereby you they normally start with a cold call. You get a cold call out of the blue from someone who eventually becomes your friend and you decide, OK, I will invest in this, these shares. They have a very legitimate-looking website that's up but will probably even have 24-7 chat available to help answer any questions that you may have. Um, the sad reality behind these overseas investment scams is that uh, hundreds and thousands of dollars is going away, going overseas, and it's not able to be recouped. Now, you know, obviously you mentioned a lot of these start with cold calling. I was interested in, in the, the little black book of scams that you've, um, you've, you've recently published that um, it says that it's illegal to sell financial products in New Zealand off the back of a, of a cold call which is quite an important point, I guess, for people to keep in their minds. Absolutely, they need to remember that, and it's probably not talked about enough. Um, FMA are quite clear on that on their website, that um, it is illegal, and I think that's people need to remember that. That's a really big red flag. So um, can you give us some examples maybe of, um, I guess, the the worst cases that you've seen of late, or and, and maybe the, I mean, the, most, the most common is these international investment ones. Is, is I think yours? that there's a lot of other ones that are really mm. common as well. The romance scams just continue. There's an awful lot of lonely people out there and they're falling for these romance scams um, and losing. So not only are they losing their money, they're also losing, when, it, when we tell them it's identified as a scam or a fraud, um, they then lose the person that they've fallen in love with. They may have been speaking to them for about three years. Um, and, you know, all of this just cascades into um, an emotional downfall for them. So, I mean, what would be the, the, the sort of biggest sum of money you've, you've seen someone lose in one of these frauds? Um, over a million dollars. This is, is an individual. Yeah, yeah. I think when I started this role about seven years ago, I used to go, wow, when someone lost 25000 Sadly, now, when someone tells me they've lost over a million, I'm like, oh, gosh, another one. So you've been in the role seven years. So, you know, in terms of the volume of, um, I guess, victims you're seeing, how much has that increased over that time? Uh, hugely. And I, we, we know we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. You know, people don't report it because they're embarrassed, they're scared, you know, they don't know where to go to report it as well, um, and maybe they just don't even know what to do. So, I mean, what would be your advice to someone who's been the victim of, of, of a scam or a fraud like this? Um, definitely report it. Uh, if you've lost money, contact your bank straight away. Contact your bank, let them know exactly what happened. Um, you can then go to other agencies or go definitely go to the police. You know, no, there can be no resources put into it to help victims if we don't know how big the problem actually is. And, um, you know, the, the, your little black book details a whole lot of, of um, different types of, of scams or, or frauds. What, what are the sort of new areas emerging and, and the ones people should particularly be concerned about at the moment? The one that was really surprising for me is there's a, a game an online Scrabble game called Words for Friends. 
I don't know if you've heard about it, but you sign up and you can ask various people for help if you get stuck with words. And I am hearing more and more and more people that are falling uh, into romance scams through through words for friends, and it's really, really interesting. Um, and they're using a lot of New Zealand-based money mules. So, um, and you, then you find out if you send your money to an, someone in New Zealand, you think you're helping your romance or your partner, um, then that person is also involved in a similar scam, and the, the case just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's really interesting. Now, you, you said a little earlier that... Um everyone who's a victim should report it. Obviously, a lot of people don't. So it's very hard to quantify, um, I guess, how many victims there are out there, how much money's being lost, because you'd imagine for every one person who does come forward and report it, there'll be several who don't. What's your advice to someone who's been a victim and maybe hasn't reported it or isn't quite sure whether they are up to reporting it? I think first up, they need to realise that they are not alone. They're not going to be the only victim that's that's fallen. Um, and they, as I mentioned earlier, if they have lost money, they need to contact their bank. It's also really difficult in New Zealand to actually know where to go. We don't have a one-stop shop to go to report scams. So um, you can either go to CERT, report it through them. You can go to NetSafe, report it through them. Um, but definitely, if you've lost money, go to your police. Go to the police. Okay. Um, and in terms of this, um, you know, you've talked about there being, you know, stigma attached to being a victim and calling it fraud instead of scams. Um, can you just explain a little bit of the thinking behind that? Absolutely. I think as soon as you hear the word scam, straight away you think, oh, how can they be so stupid? How can they be so gullible? You know, I hear it all the time. And I think we need to name it what it actually is. It's not a scam, it's fraud. It's someone has gone out of their way to take money from you. And when you start calling it fraud, if you were down the street or you were talking to a friend and you said to them, oh, I've been scammed, they'll just look at you sideways. But if you say, well, actually, I've been defrauded, it puts a whole new level on it. So as, as part of this too, maybe um, trying to educate people who haven't been victims but maybe look down on, on, on victims. Yeah, absolutely. We're constantly blaming the victims. Instead, we should be blaming the offenders. They're the ones who took the money, you know, and it's anybody can fall victim to a fraud at, at any time. You don't have to be silly. You know, it's just the perfect fraud at the perfect time by a highly skilled offender. And, I mean, often we, we think of victims of this type of fraud as, you know, often being elderly people. But um, I guess it's not always the case. Um, what sort of age range and type of people are you seeing who are among the victims these days? That it's definitely not just the elderly. It's, you know, I've had a 21-year-olds. Um, a lot of younger people are being targeted by the employment scams, you know, make some money quick type frauds, um, you know, any spectre, any age group is coming across our desk. Okay, so just in terms of, I guess, um, volume, I mean, you know, how many emails are, are being sent out claiming to be, um, you know, offering people lottery winnings from some random country or, or, or whatever yeah. um, at the moment? There was some really interesting research that was put out um, by Domo, and it, it was saying, Domo was saying that in the last two years alone, we have generated 90% of the world's data in the last two years alone. And um, from that, they were saying that there's 103,447,000 uh, spam emails sent out every minute. And um, there's 990,000 Tinder swipes every minute and things like that. It's just fascinating. So we've got this huge amount of data and things that are going on in the internet, and yet we don't warn people. We put our friends and our family on Facebook or on dating websites, and we don't warn them about the dangers, what's lurking out there. Okay, so what are some key points that people should remember um, or, to, or, or, or things they should do to, I guess, prepare themselves um, for being targeted and yeah. avoiding being ripped off. Absolutely, and you will be targeted. There's no question about it. You will be targeted at some point in time. So the big things that you need to do is stop and wait. 
stop wait and think, stop wait and validate. You know, is this for real? And instead of thinking, what could I win here, actually think, what could I lose? And, um, and also to make sure that you talk to someone. Um, the scammers or the fraudsters will swear you to secrecy, confidentiality, all of that sort of stuff, but make sure that you talk to someone, whether it be a friend, a family member, the bank staff, anybody. And I guess the old adage that if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is, is worth keeping in mind as well. Yeah, unfortunately that saying's not working, you know, because people are still falling. And, you know, again, that puts the, the onus back on the victim as well. So let's, stop, let's blame the offenders, let's think about the offenders as stealing your money and um, try and do everything that we can to protect yourself. In terms of these sophisticated international um, fraud groups, I mean, you know, what do we know about who they are and what they're doing with the money that they're taking from New Zealand victims? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we know that the, um, a lot of the money is going to organised crime. You know, they're running a really sophisticated business model. They reinvest that money back into their business to have sophisticated websites, sophisticated documents, all to lure you into that trap of believing that it's real. Um, the money's being used for drugs, for slavery, human trafficking, all of that sort of stuff. And then also, too, there's the other side of it where you've got um, some very big fat cats who are spending your money lavishly um, on a lavish lifestyle. So, I mean, what can New Zealand authorities do to combat this? And, and, and given it's, it's a cross-border crime... Obviously, the real challenge here for authorities around the world is working together, isn't that? It's on this? absolutely working together. Um, I've just recently been to a, a conference in Sydney and here in New Zealand, and the, the overwhelming sense was that we need to share the information. We need to help each other instead of hindering. You know, the scammers are unregulated. They they don't have rules that they have to run by, um, and if something's not working, they can change it up whereby we are tied by red tape and policy and procedure, and we need to get more sophisticated. So, I mean, in, in what you're seeing, are our, our authorities, police, etc., doing enough to work with their counterparts overseas in this area? There's certainly a lot of work that, can, that is going on, but I, I believe that we can be doing more. Anything in particular? Um, let's share the, where the money went. Follow the money trail and share that information. I think it's really important. I've had overseas investment scams that I saw three years ago and that bank account is still being used in Hong Kong three years later and no one shut it down. So, you know, there's that sort of information that needs to be shared. OK, well, thanks a lot for that, Bronwyn. That's Bronwyn, Bronwyn Groot, who's the Fraud Education Manager at the Commission for Financial Capability. And I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.